2000 with Roush's Kurt Busch. This season, Rick Crawford was close at Dover until a devastating penalty took him out of contention. At IRP, Terry Cook powered alongside leader Jack Sprague, but had to settle for the runner-up spot. All ran well at Chicago, but it was Kurt's younger brother, Kyle, and only his second start, who looked to return the 99 to victory lane until his fuel pickup failed. Today, Ford's best hope may be in reigning series champion Greg Biffle's hands. Can he put the blue oval back in victory lane? Well, at a track that he won out of Bush car just three months ago, you can sure bet that Greg's giving it his best shot. After all, he's starting on the outside front row. But in order to get that win for Ford, he'll have to beat the pole sitter, Terry Cook. Cook has been carrying the torch for Ford all year. He's the highest Ford in the point standings, giving them their best finish so far this year, and now captured that first pole for Ford in the 2001 season. Terry, do you think this is your best shot to put Ford in victory lane? Well, I really do, Amy. I think that the uh, power stroke use of Ford F-150 has been stout since we unloaded on Friday. And, you know, we had a poles lap, a real good lap there. And I think this is definitely our best chance this year. All right. Well, the battle between the Fords is going to be fierce up front. But let's not forget, there's a championship battle on the line. In 2001, Jack Sprague has experienced a multitude of problems. Whether on the racetrack, in the pits, or under his hood, the Net Zero team has switched from contender to pretender week to week. He scored back-to-back -back victories, but then fell into a two-week slump. He didn't see the green flag at Nashville and took himself out at Chicago. Is Sprague now down for the count, or will he rebound like a former champion? Well, for Jack Sprague today, the key number is number two. What do I want to talk about the number two for? Because Sprague has two Fords ahead of him on the racetrack, and he has two Dodges ahead of him in the championship chase. But the big number to keep in mind is two, because that's how many victories Jack Sprague has right here on this tricky track at Nazareth. And if he leads two laps today, he'll be over 1,000 for the season. But two times in the year 2001, he's finished 23rd. For Jack Sprague, who is a two-time series champion, to win it all this year, he must beat one driver that he thinks might be a little bit too old, and another driver that might be a little too tough. What a year it's been for Scott Riggs. Expectations were extremely high for the ultra-new driver of the number two. Just four races in, Riggs scored his first career truck series victory at Martinsville, then followed up with wins at Dover, Kentucky, Nashville, and Chicago to become the winningest driver this season. That rally has put him atop the championship standings by a single point. Now the big question, can he stay there? Coming off back-to-back -back wins, it has been a storybook season for this Cinderella of the Truck Series. But the big question this week, Phil, is has the glass slipper fallen off? Doc, Scott Riggs and his ultra team came here to this racetrack Friday morning for an open test session. They struggled with the racetrack. They struggled with the truck. They got it together enough Saturday morning to qualify, barely in the top ten, but they struggled again in happy hour after qualifying. There's a lot of concern in that camp. Considering the shuffle at the top of the points here the past three or four weeks, how safely does Riggs have to play it here today? Doc, I think if you, if you could look at his eyes right now, there's a look of concern. If he can get out of here with a top five, top six finish, I think he'll be tickled to death. Well, this series points chase has resembled a three-ring circus at times, and with just seven races remaining, a lot of drivers are still battling for that elusive championship chair. <laughs> ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, presents NASCAR. Today, live from Nazareth, Pennsylvania, we present the sixth running of the Chevy Silverado 200. With just seven races remaining, take a look at the closest points battle in all of major motorsports. Just one point separates the top two, Riggs from Rutman, and just the top seven separated by less than 200 points. Back to today's pole sitter, Terry Cook. Speaking of today's pole sitter, when we come back, we'll take a look at the Mopar starting grid and wave the green flag for the Chevy Silverado 200. Back in just a moment. And take a look at our Mopar starting grid for the first time this year in all Ford front row. Terry Cook's third career pole is first since August of 1998. 
And there's the reigning series champion, Greg Biffle, who won the Bush race here back in May. Back in row two, two-time Nazareth winner, Jack Sprague, alongside leading rookie candidate, Travis Quaffle. Back in row three, the man who led the most laps at Chicago Motor Speedway, Rick Crawford, brings the Milwaukee Electric Tools Ford inside row three. And beside him, Ricky Hendrick, another impressive rookie. Back in row four, Dennis Setzer, who won it here last year, all the way from 19 starting spot, and Ted Musgrave. And in row five, Lance Norrie coming off his career best finish of third last week in Chicago. And there's the points leader, Scott Riggs. Back in row six, we have 19-year-old John Wood, an impressive rookie in the Roush truck. Corey Gibbs, 10th in points. Back in row number seven, we have Joe Rutman, dominated this race from the pole last year, but finished second. And Jimmy Hensley, a Bush winner here at this racetrack. Row eight, Billy Bigley trying to stop the bleeding a little bit here lately. And Tom Carey won the Bush North race a couple weeks ago at Watkins Glen. Row nine, Matt Crafton, another impressive rookie with a number of top tens this year. And Carlos Contreras, who's playing hurt due to a garage area accident earlier this week. Bobby Dodder coming off a great 10th place run a couple of weeks ago at IRP. And Lance Hooper, 12th, his best this year. Back in row 11, Michael Dawkin led this race for five laps a year ago. There's the Winston Cup veteran Morgan Shepard. Back in row 12, Mike Olson, who leads the Bush North Series point standings, making his second ever start in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. And Rodney Sawyer's a short track ace from South Boston, Virginia. Ryan McGlynn comes back after a great run at Kentucky early in the year. He had an 11th place finish. And beside him, the Winston West veteran Larry Gunzelman. Back in row 14, there is Stan Boyd, flanked by Willie T. Ribs. Row 15 brings Brian Rose and Jerry Hill. Back in row 16, Tom Powers and Ricky Sanders. And other provisional starters, Sammy Sanders and Jonathan Price. Back in row 18, Jerry Miller and Conrad Burr. And we'll have three onboard cameras here today, including our points leader, Scott Riggs. Get a nice shot of him inside this truck. Here's Ted Musgrave, the Mopar Dodge, looking out his front windshield. And how about our pole sitter? Impressive qualifying effort, power stroke diesel Ford, third career pole for Terry Cook, a Sylvania, Ohio driver, driving for K Automotive. How about some headlines for the NASCAR Craftsman Trucks? Bush back in Richmond. We're talking about Kyle Bush, the impressive young 16-year-old. He'll come back in two weeks on Thursday night, September 6th, to run Richmond. Corelli in a Dodge. That's unusual. Big uh, Corelli was won both in Ford and Chevrolet. Going to try it in the Dodge. Possibly driving a, a Dodge by Petty with Mark and Tim Petty involved there. And Harvick for the hat trick. Kevin Harvick back in the truck series trying to win in all three divisions in Richmond in the same weekend. Glad to have you with us. We are set for the green flag at Nazareth, Pennsylvania. driver coming off back-to-back -back blown engines had horrendous finishes the past two weeks there's up front Harold Ford you see Terry Cook leads the first lap Biffle in hot pursuit we haven't seen this view very often of two Fords up front this year Cook had that great run at IRP a few weeks ago his best finish of the year that impressive performance allowed the power struck people to sign on for the remainder of this season, and they're thinking about possibly a full year in 2002. These being the first laps that Terry has led since Texas early in the year. There's our point leader, Scott Riggs, on the outside right now, Joe Rutland. That is not where you want to be in turn number two or where they are. Here, here's Scott. He gets on the outside. You hear him feathering the throttle. You don't get the grip on the outside. He is still hung up high. Trying to get to the inside, and Crafton is there. Passing the start finish line right there, going into the dog leg right there, turn number one. But see Scott hanging pretty tough on the outside there. That's not the place you want to be there on the outside. You need triangular shaped oval here at Nazareth, Pennsylvania. It's one mile around. Basically has five turns, has four turns, and, a, and what they call it, a, a dog leg, which we call a turn one. We, we call it turn one. That is def most definitely a turn. 
Any turn on the racetrack, Doctor, that you have to hit, either hit the brakes or jump way off the throttle to me is a turn. Back up front here is Greg Biffle and the Eldon Ford. Biffle, we mentioned, who won the Bush race here back in May. Finished 18th at Bristol Motor Speedway on Friday night after leading the late laps. Had trouble in the final laps and finished an 18th spot. He is the reigning NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series champion. He won this race, by the way, from the pole back in 1999. He really credited that with a lot. Uh, there's Stan Boyd, un unfortunately, having a tough, uh, tough deal. He looks like he may be out of the race. He takes the bars, leaks, splat Chevrolet back behind the wall. Stan out of Holly, Michigan. Once again, uh, here is Biffle moving in about a half a truck length away. Greg Biffle actually missed, obviously, the open practice stand on Friday because he was racing in Bristol, Tennessee, and uh, Kyle Busch shook, shook down the truck for him. Greg said Kyle got it really close. He just fine-tuned it, but the fact that he had experience at this racetrack enabled him to jump in the truck and get fast right away. And for you, though, for those of you who uh, watched the Kyle Busch impressive performance last week, here's Busch's teammate, John Wood, in the 50. The other Elden Ford, they are battling for ninth position. That is the Lance Norick. Coming off his career best finish last week at Chicago Motor Speedway. He qualified third and finished third. And this truck that he is driving today was not the one he wanted to race here. That's right. He had a big, big wreck in practice. The guys were able to get his backup truck out and got qualified in the top ten. But you see right now he's moving a couple of positions. Got passed by John Wood. Now Joe Rutman and Billy Bigley is going to take advantage of the opening. John Wood is just 19 years of age. He's had some pretty impressive runs as you watch now. Matt Kraft and another one of the impressive rookie drivers. Battle for the lead up front. Can Biffle hang on? He gets Whoa. into shape. And side, sideways coming off the turn number one there. He made a little bit of contact with Terry, but Terry was heads up. Let him have a little bit of room. This is not Williams Grove. This is Nazareth. You don't, you don't brawl. You don't power slide through the turn. Hey, this racetrack used to be dirt, Doc. I, I can imagine how it was back then. It's a challenge now with asphalt. <laughs> Greg Biffle becomes our second leader of the afternoon as he goes by pole sitter Terry Cook to take the lead here on lap number nine. Talked to Greg this morning. Number one, he got a good night's sleep last night. He only got about three hours of sleep the night before last night for coming from Bristol. But he said he really had a good truck and felt like he had the truck to win. But the guys, the two guys he was worried about are Terry Cook running in second and Jack Sprague running in third. All right, let's show you again. Hold on to the sofa, folks. We're going to show you what Terry Cook had to deal with here. Looking back from Terry Cook's onboard camera on the Power Stroke Diesel 4. Here comes Biffle. That's going down in through the turn number three and four right there. Greg's looking to the inside, got up beside him, going into the turn number one, the, the dog leg. Whoa! <laughs> Some contact there. Little Ford F-150 friendship tap there from Cook and Biffle. That's what's going to happen all afternoon here at Nazareth Speedway. Back with more in just a moment. It's Pennsylvania NASCAR exclusively here on the Worldwide Leader ESPN. NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Action. We're going to have laps. And reigning NASCAR Craftsman Truck Champion Greg Biffle in the Eldon Ford has pulled away about a second and a half lead over Terry Cook, the pole sitter, with Sprague back in third. Now, last year's winner, the Axiom Chevrolet driver, Dennis Setzer, is going backwards in a hurry. Let's check in and see what his problem is, right? Well, Jerry, Dennis has been on the radio talking to his crew chief about a bad vibration in the number 46. He said it feels like it's in the right front suspension or the right front tire, but he's not totally sure. He has been losing a lot of positions on the racetrack trying to just keep that truck from spinning out. That's her who won here from a year ago with a broken scapula. He hit the wall a ton up in New Hampshire. That was his one and only win of a year ago. Tom Carey going by on the outside there. You can tell Dennis is way off the pace right now. He had a great truck and happy hour. Take a look at Dennis Setzer here, the uh, driver from Newton, North Carolina, 41 years of age, Axiom Computer Associates Chevrolet. One win this year, that coming in Memphis. Also has a pole this year at Kansas City. Driving for Morgan Dollar Motorsports, five top fives. Six top tens in a row, ten total on the year. So, of course, he's the defending winner of this race, the Chevy Silverado 200. And Bobby Dodder on pit road in the B-Drug 3 Chevy, the Gene Christensen on the machine. Dodder, who was running awfully well in practice here. Looking under the truck right now, obviously, I don't know if they're going to look un uh, unhook the rear sway bar or, or what. 
Right down lap. But apparently, Bobby had a flat right front tire. At least that's what he radioed in. He said he also had a vibration. Looks like he may have had a little contact with the wall, so they took a look there on the rear end, but apparently it was a flat tire that brought him to pit road. Tough right for, for Bobby Dodder. And after having that great run with the Stanley Steamer, carpet cleaning people on board at IRP. This team has got better and better and better. They're just probably a sponsor away from being a contender eh, each and every week. Bobby Dodder is a real good race car driver. Ran well here in the Bush car for a number of years and, uh, had a, as we mentioned, had a great run at IRP a couple weeks ago. Here's the rookie battle. How about Travis Quapo in the Cat Rental Chevrolet for Mike Addington? Quapo being shown in the fifth position. And right behind him is Ricky Hendrick in the GMAC Chevy back in sixth spot. Watch right here now. The, it's Willie T. Ribs are up lapping Willie T. Ribs. It depends on where you catch somebody as to how fast you can get by. We saw Greg Kippel open up a second half lead. That's because he caused, caught traffic at the right place. And the guys behind him, Terry Cook and Jack Sprague, missed that traffic. You know, early in the year, Ricky Hendrick led the points battle pretty much week after week after week here in the Rebessus Rookie of the Year standards. But in the last few weeks, uh, Quapple has come on. Let's take a look at our first review. We see that uh, Travis Quapple, basically, although he has not won a race, his average finish is, is better than Ricky Hendrick's. And he is currently fourth in the points. Hendrick is fifth. In fact, Quapple has been the highest finishing rookie five weeks in a row for a total of 10 times this year and comes into here with a 12 point lead in the very best of standings over Ricky Hendrick. Gray? Well, Jerry, you talk about that average finish for Travis Quapple. Actually, a 7.1 so far this season, which is really great. But I think the big differential is the fact that he's only led in seven races this year, where Jack Sprague has led in 14 of those. So that is one of the things they've talked about here today is it's very important for them to get that number 60 out front once today to get those five bonus points so they can keep making their way up in this points race. Back up front, heavy traffic for Greg Biffle in the 99. A flat racetrack, triangular in shape in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. That's the challenge today for the NASCAR Crash Button Truck Series drivers. The challenge for the crew members, you got to be quick on pit road because track position is critical. Back in just a moment. What from trucks roll into Richmond to light up the night? Where there's smoke, there's truck racing, and where there's a short track, there's got to be some short tempers. Catch all the action next Thursday night, September 6th, 8 Eastern Time on ESPN2. Let's see if Ford can break into the win column. And that's if they don't win today because we have three Fords in the top five right now, including our leader, Greg Biffle. And we mentioned that this 99 truck will have Kyle Busch aboard at Richmond, a 16-year-old making his third start. Kevin Harvick scheduled to come back and run the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Maybe the preview of, of his team that will run full-time in 2002. And Rick Corelli in a Dodge. Corelli had an emotional victory at Richmond last year. What a everyone out there in the stands, the folks on pit road, stood and applauded as Rick Corelli got back into victory lane for the first time since that head injury a year before. That was a great run last year by Rick Corelli. Really, really dominated that race. The second place runner Terry Cook right there. He's about a about a second and a half behind right now. It all depends again on, on this racetrack is how you catch the track. You can be right on the leader's bumper. If he catches the truck, if he gets by him going into one of these flat turns, he, he can come out of the turn for the second lead. We're looking at Terry Cook right now. There. I talked to Terry before the race and he says hey, I have the ability to shift, but I don't plan on using that unless I get really bound up in traffic. Terry going right now. He's going in, in and through turn number two. He looks rather comfortable in that truck. I, I thought these guys were really had to wrestle the wheel on this flat track. Well, when the, when the truck is driving like Terry's is and like Jack Sprague's is and like Greg Biffle's is, it is pretty comfortable. Now, the guys like Dennis Setcher that's having a problem, he's not, a, he's not very comfortable, I can assure you. Terry Cook's last win came 77 races ago back in August of 1998 at Flemington. Love to break that streak, not only break his own streak, but break the Ford streak. Ford is 0 for 2001 in the series. Their last win coming in the finale last year at California with Kurt Busch. One in the number 99 truck. There's Jack Spray. Net Zero Chevrolet. We chronicled his troubles the last couple of weeks. Engine and uh, had a problem himself trying to trying to pinch his truck inside of Chicago last week. Ford back for a top 10 finish despite that spin at Chicago. 
Finds himself in third in the points, 48 behind Scott Riggs. Caught a break there, Michael Dockin in the 81 truck moved to the outside to let Jack have the inside, so that, that saved him a lot of ground. Now, how about another Ford in the top five? This is uh, the fourth place truck of Rick Paul from Milwaukee Electric Tools Ford. Same truck he led 60 laps with last week at Chicago. Second time this year, he has led the most laps, and he is the only Ford to lead the most laps in the series this year. Of course, Ford hasn't won yet, but exact same truck and running awfully well here. Here is a unbelievably, this is how bad it is. If you're having a bad day, you can go bad in a hurry. Setzer, last year's winner, goes a lap down. Yeah, and, and he had a great truck and happy out. He was, uh, he maybe wasn't in the class of the top three right now, but he was right right there with him. And uh, he's obviously some, some ways of problems with him Setzer. It's hard, as Ray mentioned earlier, talking to his crew chief, Danny Gill, that he had some sort of a vibration. And it's, it's hard to drive these things down in the corner at 140 or 50 miles an hour when the thing's vibrating and you're wondering if the front wheel's going to fall off. And we told you this track's essentially flat. I mean, turn one is three degrees. Turn two is four degrees. You really got banking in turns three and four. You got six degrees there. So <laughs> essentially a very challenging, triangular, like the drivers call this a rover. A road course oval. It's a combination. As you watch this battle side by side for position, how about uh, little John Wood coming on? John Wood making some making some noise here. Great move. Get by Ted Musgrave. You know, we talk about turn number two having four degrees banking or whatever. I always thought it was four degrees the other way. So I'm not sure they're measuring. It. A lot of guys I think would agree with you. This is a very very challenging racetrack. Now here's Ted Musgrave in the Mopar Dodge. Let's see what's happening with him as we check in his pits with Amy. Well, you're right, Jerry. This track is challenging enough, but for Ted Musgrave, he has no communication with his spotter, so he's being very cautious, especially like we just saw there with the 50 truck of John Wood. Now, his spotter, Eddie Thrapp, was a little bit sick this morning, so they don't know if he's sick and has just left the spotter stand or if maybe his radio is not working. So aside from this being a tricky track for Ted Musgrave and never running here before, he's running alone with no spotter. Well, Amy, we actually are just right above the spotters here at the top of the grandstands, and we can see Eddie Thrapp down from us. He is uh, with straw hat on and the radio on. And he is actually washing the truck, so maybe they have a radio problem. But here's you see Dennis Setzer on pit road in the Axiom Chevrolet, right? Well, Jerry, they just decided they couldn't stay out there any longer. Dennis said that the truck just felt like it. And now they have a problem is the truck has actually gone over the air gun. So they're going to have to jack up that right side and over that air gun a little bit. So when things go bad, they've really gone bad for Dennis Setson. Well, when it rains, it pours here. But fortunately, we have no rain. We have nothing but sunshine here in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Great day here in Nazareth, about an hour and a half north of Philadelphia. Side of the X Games. As we are in the early laps here of the NASCAR Craftsman Trucks Chevy Silverado 200. There are the spotters up on top of the roof. Jackson, we mentioned last week that Lance Norick had his best start and finish of, the, of his career, third and third in Chicago. Been a tough weekend for him here at Nazareth. Yesterday morning in practice, he had the same truck that he had run and finished so well with in Chicago, but not the same results. Hard impact into the wall as he climbs out. The truck is essentially demolished. It sure is. But look right behind his helmet. You see that black thing? That's a Hans device. So he had a head and neck support. So I'm sure that had, had a lot to do with the fact he jumped right out of that truck. That's High Boy, the truck they've named High Boy. Now it's just a high bill. It's going to take a lot to repair that one. Fortunately, he was okay due to the NASCAR safety restrictions there. And just a moment ago, he has been on and off pit road. Right, Amy? That's right, Jerry. And aside from being in the backup truck and qualifying ninth, he had went a lap down early. They changed the entire setup after happy hour yesterday. John Munson decided, hey, let's roll the dice. Let's try something new. And it did not work. So he came down pit lane, made massive adjustments, took on left side tires, disconnected the rear sway bar, and jacked a bunch of wedge into that ninth Chevrolet, therefore trying to make it where he is fixing the loose condition that he has so far. Thank you very much, Amy. Tough, tough week after that great run last week uh, at Chicago Motor Speedway. Speaking of great runs, how about the Eldon Ford coming by? That is Greg Biffle, reigning NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series champion. Looked to have a good run going in the Bush race on Friday night at Bristol, but uh, 
and as the laps wound down, he ended up uh, having some problems and finishing 18 spot. He sure did. He really had the lead late in the race, and uh, right after he started, went down in turn one. He said he, he felt his right front tire going down and it really get him poor, uh, to a poor finishing position, but it looked like he had a chance to win that race. Greg Biffle has led more laps and more races than any rookie in the history of the Bush Grand National Series. He led 17 races and 831 laps this year. That's how impressive he has been with three wins. He basically ties Steve Park and Kevin Harvick for the most wins by a rookie in the series. I tell you, Doc, it's an incredible what kind of pace he's setting right now. He's only within about two seconds of lapping our points leader, Scott Riggs. All right, let's check in his pits with Ray. Gary, keep in mind that this is the first race in probably three years that Greg Biffle has competed in without his crew chief, Randy Goss. Randy is not here this weekend, so Jeff Campy is the full-time crew chief on this uh, truck today. Now, Greg has said he's just a little bit loose coming off three and four, so they are going to make either a wedge or a track, a track bar adjustment on the rear end of that truck on the first pit stop to try to make it a little bit better. But Greg said, let's make a very minute change here because we don't need to change it much because it's pretty doggone good. Got to look a moment ago. Thank you, Ray, at Jeff Campy. They call him Lumpy. That's his nickname, and he was the same guy that dialed that truck in last week for Kyle don't Busch. Me, Whoa, as... Uh, our points leader, Riggs, trying to stay on the lead lap, and here comes Biffle on the outside. And there's Joe Rutman right in front of Riggs, so he's getting ready to put the first and the second place point in the lap down. Clear low. All right, let's check in the Riggs pit, Amy. Well, Scott Riggs doesn't have a lot of experience here. He only has one race under his belt, and crew chief Timmy Kahuth, along with Scott Spotter, his dad, Russell, have been every lap just basically coaching him around this track, saying, that was a good turn, get her a little higher next time, too high. And so what they're doing is just basically trying to teach Scott this track, and unfortunately, it's not working right now. He's complaining of a loose truck, and also trying to learn this track, he's backing up in a hurry. Well, Amy, they may be struggling, but I think a lot of it has to do also with how well the 99 is running. You see Riggs uh, has gained two spots. He actually lost to his start at 10th, he's back in 12th position. We only have 10 trucks on the lead lap after 53 laps. That's incredible. That's an incredible uh, pace being set by Greg Biffle. Now, we told you we got the tightest points battle in all of major motorsports. The points as of right now would have Ruffman up in front of Riggs. Greg, uh, 12 points back in third, then Quaffle, then Hendrick. And every single position counts, and here goes another pass. You see that? Right now, he just took the point and lead back from Joe Rubin. Now, he is, he's, he is back to four points ahead. And you know what, Phil? I am so excited. With just six more events after today, we could go to the finale in California and have six or seven people that could win the championship in that race on that day. I cannot remember seeing a better point battle than we have right here in the Craftsman Truck Series. This is unbelievable. Great competition here on ESPN, the exclusive home for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. And Jerry Hill, the Port Tobacco railroad driver, may have had some wall contact. He takes the Troxel Motorsports Chevrolet back behind the wall. We'll check in on Jerry's situation and report to you when we come back with more live coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Trucks from Nazareth, Pennsylvania. NASCAR action showing a battle of the young guns here on ESPN. 19-year-old John Wood right behind leading rookie contender Travis Quapple. There's Ricky Hendrick having gone by the left side of your screen in the 60. That is Quaffle. And behind him is the 50 of John Wood. And those trucks are being shown in fifth, sixth, and seventh position. And Joe Rutman, the, the veteran of the Dana Dodge on pit road. It's a little bit early, Doc. Lap 60. They said they could go about 85 or so on fuel. Right? Well, Jerry, these guys really didn't have a truck that was good enough to win today, so they decided they're going to try a little different pit road strategy. There is a chance that this race could go green today, so why not try something? Come in here, get fresh tires on a little bit early, and try to make up some of that ground on the 99 truck because he's really done himself great laps. Oh, and Crafton goes around, Ray. And just hang fast, on to it now. Hang on to it. Fast track driveway sealer Chevrolet yeah, for Duke hard. Thorson has gone around and tagged the concrete, bringing out the caution flag for the first time here on lap 61. What a horrible break for Joe Rutman right there. That's going to put him at least two, maybe even three laps down. Unbelievable. 
And not a great break for Matt Trafton either because he's had back-to-back -back blown engines and hoping to have a good one. They were the fastest rookie in happy hour. They were very, very quick. They were really doing a great job for another guy that had never seen this racetrack before. Moving in on Billy Bigley now. Let's see what happens. Uh, was there contact here? He well, he locked up the brakes. You saw the left front tire stop turning, so he locked up the brakes. And when he did, he obviously the tires weren't gripping anymore, and he slid up into Billy Bigley, and around he went. Uh, and horrible. That and that happened right in front of the leader, just about a half a two, about two trunk lengths behind him was uh, Greg Biffle. Exactly just right. saw Biffle go by. And they have taken uh, taken him behind the wall. Tough break for Matt Crafton, the, the reigning Featherlight Southwest Series champion and a rookie contender here. Now, how about pit stops as they head down pit road at 45 miles an hour? Here comes Biffle leading Terry Cook and Jack Sprague now. Let's go down to leaders pits and Ray Dunlap. Well, Jerry, we they're uh, worried about making sure they get a lot of fuel in here. Now, Biffle does have a bit of an advantage because where his pit stall is, there's no one in front of him. They're going to go up a half a pound air pressure on the right front, down a half a pound on the right rear. So just a minor chassis adjustment. Right side tires for Biffle, now to Amy East. Well, our pole sitter, Terry Cook, is coming down for right side tires. He's been complaining of a tight condition, so they're increasing that air pressure on the right rear tire, going for the full two cans of fuel. A moment ago, we showed you some of the crew members working, practicing their pit stops. Track position is so critical here on this uh, very tough racetrack, this flat racetrack. Now, Phil Parsons, we, we heard uh, Ray Dunlap say air pressure change up on the right front and down on the right rear for Greg Biffle. What are they trying to do? Well, he's actually trying to tighten the car up a little bit. When you go, when you put more air pressure in the right front, you're trying to make that actually stiffer. So he's, he's got a little bit of a loose condition we heard earlier. So he's actually trying to tighten the car up with the right front air pressure going up, the right rear air pressure coming down. By the way, I mentioned the pit road speed was 45. It's actually 35 miles an hour. Let's check in back in the Cat Riddle pits with Ray. Well, Jerry, they were making a chassis adjustment for Travis Quapple also. They put a half a rubber in the left rear, and they also did right side tires here. But the problem was, these are extremely tight pit stalls right here, and Billy Bigley, who's right in front of him, had stopped short in his box. So when Travis's pit stop was complete, he wasn't able to get back out. So they probably had a great pit stop that didn't get very good because he couldn't get out of the box. Amy East. Well, it's been a long time since we've seen Scott Briggs come down pit lane the second time around. That's when the lap down trucks come down pit lane. He is going to get right side tires and fuel, and Ultra Bad Boys had a great stop. There's the 18 on and off pit road as well. Both those trucks are being shown uh, at least a lap down. Briggs is one lap down. Rubman is two laps down. As we are under caution here for the first time today. With Phil Parsons, Amy East, and Ray Dunlap. Glad to have you with us for the Chevy Silverado 200, the sixth edition. We are under caution for the first time today. Our pit summary showing you that the uh, the Hendrick trucks did pretty well. Both Sprague and, Hen and Ricky Hendrick gained uh, a spot coming off pit road. Crawford lost two spots, as did uh, Terry Cook lost a spot from second to third. It's incredible how important the, the pit battle is right now. This, this racetrack is pretty difficult to pass on. Greg Biffle's not having much trouble passing anybody, but for the most part, it's pretty difficult to pass, so every position counts. And he got lucky a moment ago because when this caution came out, he was only about two truck lengths behind. Here's what happened on lap 61. See, that's Greg Biffle, the truck on the right side. You see Matt Crafton on the inside. You're going to see the smoke here. See, he locks up his front wheels trying to keep off of Billy Bigley. And when he did, the truck would turn. Then he had to turn the wheel to try to keep from running into Big Billy Bigley and around the back end went. Tough break for Matt Crafton, uh, one of the uh, impressive young drivers. They're trying to get some gas in that truck. That's the uh, fast track driveway sealers Chevrolet for Duke Thorson and company. That's the fastest part of the racetrack going in that turn, in turn number three there, where, uh, where he had his problems. So he hit the wall pretty hard. Crafton has two sixth-place finishes to his credit this year at Martinsville and Pikes Peak as a seventh and an eighth as well, hoping to get his first top five. We mentioned he was the fastest rookie in happy hour yesterday afternoon at a track that he had never seen before. So uh, this is an impressive young talent. And we mentioned that Bobby Dodder had been on and off pit road a couple of times, and Casey came, came down pit road, went to the garage area for, uh, for a driver change, we're told. Ray, what, what were they doing? 
Well, Jerry, they decided to get Mike Olson, who's a competitor in the NASCAR Bush North Series that'll be racing here later to get into Bobby Dodder's truck because Bobby is actually not feeling very well. And I said, you know, did you not think you could make the distance? He said, I didn't think I was even going to get it down pit road. So really, Bobby, very sick here. And Mike Olson now is in the 08 truck. And Mike is the is the points leader for the Bush North Series, which will race later today. He's a two-time winner this year at the Bush North and won at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway in Scarborough, Maine, and at Star Speedway in Epping, New Hampshire. Mike making his second-ever NASCAR ready, Bush buddy. truck start. Yeah, he actually started the race in Bobby Dowder's team truck but had trouble and was out of the race. And he ran New Hampshire early in the year. Here is Biffle leading him down to the green flag. He had a great start. That, that looks like Dennis Setzer spun the wheels, who was on the inside line, front row inside line. Looks like he spun the wheels, and that's why uh, Greg got such a great run. He just joined us. It was an all-forward front row for Terry Cook and Greg Biffle. Biffle then soared by Cook on lap nine to take the lead. As you watch Terry Cook trying to make the pass, Ricky Hendrick, that's for position, that's for third spot. Terry's on the inside right now, trying to stay off of Ricky, but he's going to beat him down in the turn in the turn number one, so he's got the position, third position. Ricky got a tough break there while Terry Cook was getting by him. Corey Gibbs was able to get by him, too. He's a lap down, but he was able to get by him, but that puts another truck in between. And now it looks like Joe Rutman is on the inside of Ricky Hendrick. A lot of our better trucks, like Rutman, that you see running in the front most of the weeks, are showing laps down. Rutman is two laps down because of the pace that Greg Biffle has set here early on. That is a 17, which is the fourth place truck. That's Ricky Hendrick. And the Dana Dodge on the inside is Rutman, who is two laps down in 19th position. Tom Carey on the inside of the trying to get by Ricky Hendrick. Also, Ricky's got to get back to the bottom of the racetrack here. He's got a better truck than those guys, but he cannot stay on the bottom. Tom Carey being shown in 12 spot on lap down. There are only nine trucks on the lead lap by virtue of Biffle's pace early on here in the first 70 laps. There's Ted Musgrave right there. And Ted's in the sixth position right now. Rick Crawford ahead of him in the fifth position. Going by the start finish line. follow them around here. This is turn number two going under the bridge. Look how long this corner is, Doc. You, you get in the throttle, back off the throttle. You try to keep the front end of the truck down. Then you slam the throttle down, go all the way out to the outside wall, down the back stretch. You heard Ted Musgrave's shift coming off turn number two. In a tight turn number three, use a lot of brakes. Back in the throttle, easy on the throttle, get straight. Back hard down in the throttle, back to the start finish line. And meanwhile, Matt Crafton is back on the racetrack. The crew has worked to get the uh, Duke Thorson Chevy back on the track to pick up some valuable points. Crafton coming in was being shown in the 12th spot overall in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series point standings. And with the points as close as they are, he would like to be able to get a top 10 finish. And so these laps are critical for him. There's Musgrave going by. Then comes the 50 of John Wood. Then Travis Quapple. Let's watch uh, Joe, uh, Ted Musgrave right here. Going down right now into turn number two. I think we'll see Ted Musgrave as he comes off turn number two shift into the fourth gear. I think he's in third gear right now. He carries most of the racetrack in third gear. Let's see if he's just coming. There he goes. There he goes to fourth gear. Coming off turn number two. Now he's back into turn number three, all the way back into third gear. Now he'll run that all the way back around the racetrack. So he's in fourth gear for a very short period of time. Musgrave in the same truck he finished seventh with last week at Chicago. And here comes John Ward, the 19-year-old. Just sailing by on the inside. How about another? I bet Ted's where did these young kids come from? There goes Wood by me. Now here's Quapple banging on the back of me trying to get by. It's a group of four trucks right there that have not have ever been up this racetrack here. So they, they're adapting pretty well. All four of these trucks are still in the lead lap. And, of course, uh, none of them have, have won. Although Billy Bigley has run in all pro races here in the past, but he is, he is in the 75 in the Wayne and Connie Spears manufacturing machine. We're talking about the 50, the 1, the 60, and the 75. Wood, Musgrave, Quapple, and Bigley. At 6, 7th, 8th, and 9th. Well, 75 laps are in the books here at Nazareth, Pennsylvania. The Chevy Silverwater 200 and a Ford, a Ford is leading. the show Dennis Setzer although he qualified well and started back in seventh spot he backed up in a hurry and lost a lap and made an unscheduled pit stop maybe Ray can shed some light on it now right well Jerry right here is the wheel that came off of Dennis Setzer's truck and you'll notice right in this section here from the center of where the lug nut or where the 
uh, stud comes through, there's a crack that goes all the way out here to the center, and it's actually not real visible, but it was pretty significant when they were putting pressure on here. Now, what Billy Hodges from Goodyear has told me, there's a possibility that when this lug nut was torqued down, that it wasn't seated properly in the center. And so, therefore, you got a lot of extra pressure right here, and you think that it's really tight and it's torqued all the way that it needs to be, but it actually isn't, and then that starts to come loose, and that may be what caused the vibration for Dennis Setzer. And that's got to be scary. That's why he was having that vibration in the right front. Great pickup, Ray. Thanks for uh, checking on that for us. Pretty good battle here between uh, Chevy and Ford, talking about the 17, the GMAC-sponsored truck of Ricky Hendrick, the rookie, and then Rick Crawford. Veteran all-pro racer, you know, NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series racer makes a move on the inside. On the inside, he's going to see if he can open up the door for John Wood. Be a Ford Tango going by the Chevrolet. Crawford uh, led the most laps we mentioned in Chicago last week. Has uh, two top fives in the last couple of races. Last three events of the using Ernie Elliott Motors. Had a sixth, third, and a fifth. You watch John Wood now trying to make the pass. So then tip to, uh, tiptoe through turn number one right there. John's trying to get work to the inside of Ricky Henry here to try to beat him off turn number two and get him down to turn number three. John Wood's dad, Eddie Wood, came up from Bristol, Tennessee, where Elliot Sadler finished uh, 11th last night driving the Western Cup car. So Eddie up with the spotters watching his 19-year-old uh, son go right by Ricky Hendrick. Well, Ricky got in, actually got in the corner too hard on the outside, turn number one there, and he lost grip and allowed three trucks to get by him in addition to John Wood. Now he will fall all the way back to the ninth spot as the final truck on the lead left. Again, there are just nine trucks on the lead left because of the torrid pace that Greg Biffle has been setting. And how about a move a moment ago by Terry Cook? Great job here. We saw him run a second early on before that caution flag got beat out of the pits by Jack Sprague's pit crew. Terry's able to get back by him now and see what he can do chasing down Greg Biffle, our leader. Power stroke diesel on the side of Terry Cook's truck for the remainder of 2001. Here is Cook a moment ago. Great pass. Got, got the truck turned, coming off for turn number three, uh, turn number four right there. Got in the inside, a little bit of contact maybe, but beat Jack down in the turn number one, the dog leg. Again, K Automotive, the people who own that truck, Kay Keselowski, Bob and Ron Keselowski, they own the truck that Dennis Setzer won with here a year ago. Terry Cook now driving for this team, was our pole sitter, and is now being shown in second position. Let's check in their pits with Amy. Well, Terry had just radioed into crew chief Bob Keselowski that he feels as though the truck is getting better and better the more laps that they run. He had said the same thing just prior to that caution, and now they're glad that they're back running some green flag laps in hopes that he can get back on track and try to run down that 99 truck. Hard to find better people anywhere in motorsports than Bob and Kay and Ron Keselowski. The whole Keselowski family, long time. Arca Remax competitors came to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck. He's a former Arca champion, by the way. And, of course, uh, that's Bob Keselowski and Ron, who's the engine builder and the older brother. Pretty darn good driver in his own run. He sure was. Actually, Ron did the driving first, and then and then Bob took over after Ron quit driving. But they grew up very close to where I grew up, so I've known the Keselowski family just about my whole life. We don't hold that against them. <laughs> that's right. There is Terry Cook, who was the pole center. Greg Biffle, who... And the Bush Series race at Bristol Motor Speedway on Friday night. Got about three hours sleep and uh, got up here. How about a driver who came from the Bush race Friday night and got no sleep? He drove, talking about Lance Hooper, he drove from Bristol, Tennessee to Nazareth and practiced his truck, qualified it, and made the race with no sleep. How about that? That's desire. That means dedication. Absolutely. Give a, give a call to Lance Hooper, the former Winston West and Southwest Series champion. Closing it on the halfway mark here. Just over 90 laps complete as Biffle continues to show the way here at Nazareth, PA. NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series action continuing here as we move in on the halfway point. Greg Biffle trying to put the Blue Oval Boys, trying to put Ford back in victory lane for the very first time in 2001. And how about Travis Quapel in the Cat Rental Chevy? Headed behind the wall, Rick Wren and company. Quapple had been running in the top ten. Ray, what's the problem? Well, Jerry, I'm not sure if I've uh, got this story right or not, but I just heard him say the fire extinguisher went off inside the truck. 
So I'm on my way to check it out. They're in the back in the garage here. We'll be with you in just a second. Have you ever had that happen before? I have. I had it happen during a race one time. I, I can't believe that, that that was the problem. The fire extinguisher may have went off, but I cannot believe that's what put them behind the wall because you can run without it without the fire extinguisher. Obviously, it has nothing to do with the engine running, so it's probably not a, not a safe situation, but they're looking under the trucks. So something else has gone wrong. And after having five consecutive weeks uh, where he was the highest finishing rookie and leading the rookie points by 12 over Ricky Hendrick, he is behind the wall in the garage. Let's go back to Ray. Well, Jerry, apparently it has to do with gears. Well, I'm not sure if it's the rear end gear or in the transmission, but they just said, let's find out what's wrong with the gear because I think he's stuck in second, and that's no good at a track like this. Not for very long at all as they look beneath the truck there. Rick Wren and company in the Kent Rental bike had it on Kent Rental. Now here is Jack Sprague in the Net Zero Chevrolet running in third spot. We mentioned he had some troubles the past couple of weeks, and uh, at last week at Chicago in the final lap, there was a lot of beating and banging at Chicago Motor Speedway. We'll show you what happened. Take a look at Sprague. It's a little tap from behind by John Wood here in the final laps, a little bumper tag. And then when the race was over, Sprague thought that it was Coy Gibbs, so he bangs Coy Gibbs' truck on pit road, and it's a mistaken identity. Now Gibbs and Ricky Hendrick have some exchange some words, and they bring in the coach. He says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, 15 yards, unsportsmanlike <laughs> conduct. It's mistaken identity. We didn't do anything. And Jack Sprague says, I'm sorry, you're right. It wasn't you. It was a 50 truck. So a little post-race shenanigans there in Chicago. Well, end of the race right there, those guys battling for position. Sometimes, you know, sometimes there's some contact. We, we saw a little bit of contact uh, last couple of nights in Bristol with the Winston Cup and the Bush Series. Some contact. <laughs> my, 12, 16 caution flags. Let's check in and update this story uh, this week with the battling tr truck drivers with Amy. Well, then, after all that confusion, Jack Sprague decided that he would go down and talk to John Wood and give him a little bit of experience and advice on how to race in the NASCAR Truck Series. Well, Jack was a little big talking because that conversation never happened. Maybe he thought that unsportsmanlike conduct that Coach was telling him about should have done it over with him there in Chicago. And that was just after the race, before we ever got to Victory Lane to do anything. That was just happening down pit road. Sprague thought it was Coy Gibbs, so he gives Coy Gibbs right side of his truck a, a, a facelift, I should say. And uh, they had to rebuild the right side of the MBNA Chevy this week because Sprague thought it was Gibbs that was punching him in the back on those last laps, and it was the rookie, uh, John Wood. As you, as you said, a good case of mistaken identity. After 15 yards from Coach, you know, unsportsmanlike <laughs> for mistake, conduct. For mistaken, for mistaken identity. For mistaken identity. <laughs> And there is Coy. That is the truck, by the way, that uh, that they had last week. Gary Showalter and crew had to replace the whole right side uh, of that truck after uh, that post-race incident on pit road a week ago. Coy's really running pretty well. He, he got a lap down early, but he's in the ninth position right now. But he's running right behind Rick Crawford, who's actually running in the fourth position. So he has a lot better truck than where he's running. You know, Coy ran an all-pro race here a few years ago and finished fifth. The very first race he ever ran for the all-pro series was right here at Nazareth. How'd you like to have your very first start come at this tough racetrack? Right. And he finished fifth. They got easier after this anyway. Well, let's go down to Ray and check in. I think he's caught up with Travis Quapple. Well, Jerry, he still sits on inside the truck here. Travis, uh, apparently a gear problem. Were you shifting out there at all on the racetrack? No, we weren't. We just ran along in fourth gear. Uh, you know, it was pretty disappointing for the team. Uh, we, we had a pretty good truck. We were riding around in the top ten, and it, it was a really loose truck. But, uh, you know, we were going to make a few more adjustments, and we've been right there with, with the leaders, I think. But that's just a bad day for the Cat Reynolds Store team. You know, we're riding around in the top ten doing what we need to do, and we just had a, you know, a ma mechanical failure. You guys really have been the picture of consistency so far this year. Yeah, we have. I guess, you know, Daytona, we started a year off rough with the, with the accident there, but ever since then, we haven't finished winning worse than 12. The team's been real good. We've been leading the Chevrolet like a rock award, and that's what we need to do. You know, we're going to have problems like this. The gears are going to break once in a while. It's just unfortunate it happened here. Absolutely. Fourth in the points right now, and Travis Quapple sits behind the wall, so he will take a big hit there in that part of the in the points. Well, he was uh, fourth in points coming in, and as uh, you watch Biffle going by again to put another lap down, on the two truck, who is our points leader, Scott Riggs. 103 laps are in the books. Back with more live truck action from Nazareth in a moment. Hey, Pennsylvania, I'm Jerry Parsons with Phil Parsons, Ray Dunlap, and Amy East. And there is Coy Gibbs, who is being shown 10th in the point standings and uh, 11th here in the overall standings of the race. And now he has slowed suddenly and taken the MBNA Chevrolet behind the wall. So the youngest son of Joe and Pat Gibbs. 
Older brother J.D. actually runs Joe Gibbs Racing as you take a look at the 75 truck of Billy Bigley. Trying to stay on the lead lap. Bigley uh, is in eighth spot. Here comes Biffle. It's Biffle and Bigley. Or Bigley and Biffle. Depending upon your preference as now Biffle will make the pass. And now we just have seven trucks on the lead lap. So Greg Biffle get a little bit sideways right there getting off turn number four here trying to trying to get the throttle down to get up the side Billy Bigley before they got to turn number one. Billy Bigley running a brand new truck. It was new at uh, Nashville and Chicago. They broke an engine in both places. They've gone back to their in-house engines this week with Doug Wolf building a pretty good motor. So now he's being shown in the top ten in eighth position. Let's update uh, Coy Gibbs with Amy. They had went under the hood. He was having transmission trouble. He refired it. They pushed him off. So not sure exactly what the problem was, but I think we'll be seeing the MBNA Chevy back on the track here soon. There's our seventh place guy, Ted Musgrave, just got left by our leader, Greg Biffle. I tell you, this has been one of the strangest races we've had all year. We've had we've had Travis Quapper, who doesn't fall out of races, fall out of a race. We had Corey Gibbs go behind the wall with transmission trouble. We've had Scott Ricks get lapped twice on the racetrack. Now Ted Musgrave gets lapped, and Etcetera has a track wheel. This is unbelievable. And Jack Sprague is a two-time winner. Has led more laps than anybody at Mad for 205 laps coming in. Has a little lap. Terry Cook was a pole sitter. He led eight laps uh, on lap nine. Greg Biffle took over. From the outside front row, has led 104 consecutive laps. That's where we are right now. Lap 113 of 200, and Greg Biffle, the reigning NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series champion, driving for Jack Roush and uh, moving in on the 17 truck of Ricky Hendrick, who was the sixth place truck here this afternoon. Boy, not only does Ford make it their first win, they may dominate this day. They might, between uh, Terry Cook and Greg Biffle, they may lap all the rest of the trucks all together. How about Tom Carey in the 03, the former uh, Bush North Series competitor? Tom being shown in ninth position, one lap down, having another great run, had a great run at Loudon, New Hampshire earlier in the year. He sure did. He actually he also won the Bush North Race a couple weeks ago at Watkins Glen, passed uh, Brad Layton, I think, with two laps to go next to the last lap and won the Bush North Race at Watkins Glen. Good race car driver. And he finished 11th at New Hampshire, finished 12th at IRP, and this is his third start this year, so would love to be able to. Tom actually works for Andy Santerra and was driving a car that Andy Santerra fielded in that Bush North race up at Watkins Glen, as you said, and in his first Bush North win of the year. Well on his way to a good, strong top 10 finish here. the 10th place truck about a straightaway back and that would be Jimmy Hensley out of Bridgeway, Virginia, the Greenfield Dodge. Hensley uh, has led over 100 laps at this racetrack in years past. Had some very, very good finishes. Yeah, there's Jimmy getting lapped. You see, you see Eric Bevel get sideways there. Coming off turn number one there. You got underneath Jimmy Hensley. Beat him down into turn number two. That puts Jimmy two legs down. Still a great run though by Jimmy Hensley. So again, no surprise here. Jimmy Hensley, I watched the bush race here back several years ago that Jimmy Hensley won. And of course, Phil, he was driving for Don Beverly that day when he won. That was back in 1990. And Jimmy Hensley said that he just absolutely loved this racetrack. But earlier today, they had an electrical problem in the number 72. And I think that's one of the reasons why they lost a lap. He had thought for a while that the distributor was not working, but maybe they changed it in the box. But an electrical problem has uh, given him a bit of a fit today. Great at He's actually running a Dodge for the McDonald Motorsports team, which is pretty unusual. They normally run Chevrolets, but he actually has the old-style Dodge engine that Buddy Arrington, uh, that Joey Arrington built us several years ago, but it's been updated to 12 to 1, but it is the old-style Dodge engine. Even the old ones are stout. <laughs> that Dodge has been awfully good this year with 12 wins at NASCAR Craftsman Trucks. And how about the 11th place truck? We mentioned earlier Lance Hooper out of Palmdale, California, the County Building Center Chevrolet, driving for uh, Joey Sontag and Ron Crosby. And Lance drove all the way from Bristol, Tennessee, Friday night after running the Bush race there uh, to be here at Nazareth to qualify and race this truck. That's how badly he wants to be a full-time competitor. And you got to give a call to someone like that who really wants it so badly running Bush. No sleep. Came here, practiced, and qualified all day on Saturday. And really doing a good job, too. Oh, tough. Dennis Setzer back in the pits. 
Well, Phil, this actually is scheduled now because he got off sequence, so they're going to make a pretty good uh, track bar adjustment there, down a couple of rounds, and do four tires on this pit stop right now. You can do four tires when we're under green, and because he's off sequence here, uh, they just figured it was his time to come in. Might as well do four. I think they're missing a love nut in the right rear. I think that was the summary. I think that was pretty clear. I think that was pretty clear that they were trying to explain. We had one more lug nut, and it was on the right rear. Sets are on and off pit road. Frustration in the Axion pits. Back in a moment. happened so far lap 61 rookie Matt Crafton trying to get underneath Billy Bigley a little too fast a little too hard on the brakes and he slides right in front of the leader Greg Biffle and Crafton into the concrete he goes behind the wall tough break for the rookie how about the leading rookie contender Travis Quapple heads for the garage area possibly a transmission or rear end problem as they check for the ratchet in the right rear but the real story has been uh, the driver of the number 99, the Eldon Ford. Great day for Eldon, Rubbermaid, and Sharpie. They're the sponsorship involved with Jack Roush Racing. Both trucks have Eldon sponsorship on board here in the NASCAR Craftsman Trucks. This is Craig Biffle, reigning NASCAR Craftsman Truck Champion, who has led 118 laps. You know, we've talked about the Roush trucks reevaluating their program. I think they pretty much figured out some stuff on their program right now. I mean, they almost won last week going with little Kyle Busch. Let's go down and talk to Lumpy, otherwise known as Jeff Campy. Well, one week ago, now Greg's talking to him on the radio here, telling him about their next chassis adjustment, but one week ago, things looked pretty bad. A week later, things looked pretty good. How you feeling? Uh, we're feeling good. The Eldon uh, Ford is running real good. We, uh, we're we just, you know, it's great to have Greg Biffle. I mean, you know, he's, he's a great driver, and Kyle, Kyle Busch done a great job last week, and we just had some misfortune, but we're coming along. We're doing good. We're a little freer than we'd like to be, but I think we're going to be all right. What did you learn last week? I know Jack had a little talk to you, said no big problem. This is a learning process. Yeah, we just, that last lap, we all kind of brain faded, and uh, we needed to slash it around a little bit more. We had the fuel. We just, we just, none of us thought about it on that last caution lap, so we learned it. Uh, we go on, I guess. Some of that's inexperience. A lot of guys on this crew with not a lot of experience, but the good news is the driver's got it, right? Yeah, yeah, he does. He's got a lot of experience. He, he can carry us at times. Uh, he's carrying them right now, guys, and uh, I'll tell you what, uh, with this kind of a performance here, you can't go wrong with Greg Biffle. Last week on a flat racetrack, Kyle Busch was leading folks with 13 laps to go under caution. And it's a flat racetrack in Chicago, and he, it, he didn't, it, it didn't tell him to move the truck back and forth to slosh the gas around. If he sloshes the gas around, there's a small box in the right rear of the fuel cell that'll trap the gas. Now, I'm told it takes 45 seconds for the gas in that box to burn out. That last caution lap took a minute and 10 seconds. He ran out of gas. That's exactly right, Doc. Had he known, see, the, the racetrack is banked three or four degrees, so that's just enough at 35 miles an hour for the fuel not to get over to the right rear corner and get in the box. The box has trap doors, allows the fuel to get in, but not to get out other than into the fuel line to go towards the carburetors. So when they when he ran around on the bank racetrack, all the fuel went away from the pickup. As you mentioned, in 45 seconds, it emptied out the box, and then he was completely out of gas. We almost saw history made last week at Chicago, folks. Kyle Busch is coming back at Richmond. He will run five of the last six events of the year if he is cleared by NASCAR's committee on young drivers. And if he does get the clearance after Richmond, he'll run maybe four more. They haven't decided which four, but uh, we can see history made at Richmond. And talk about experience in the Roush team returning for Roush. 79 starts, a 14-time winner, 40 top fives. He won here from the pole back in 1999. And uh, this year in Bush Series competition, three wins, equaling Steve Park and Kevin Harvick as the most wins by a rookie in Bush Series competition, winning at Nashville, Nazareth here back in May, and of course at Milwaukee. Biffle's last Truck Series win came back in July a year ago at Michigan, July 22nd of 2000 at Michigan, hoping to put Ford in victory lane for the first time here in 2001. Here's Travis Quapel, our rookie points leader, back on the racetrack. He's being shown in 25th position, 35 laps behind. They look at the rookie points 
where they are running. Uh, you see Quapples in 25th position, Hendrick in fifth spot. He is uh, now being shown one lap down, only four trucks on the lead lap. Then Crafton back in 22nd after being behind the wall for a while. He's back on the racetrack. Bigley in seventh. Great run for Billy Bigley. Going back in-house with the engine program this week for the Spears Manufacturing Chevy. Then uh, Willie T. Red back in 17th spot. So a top 20 run for Willie. If yeah. Ricky can maintain his position somewhere around the top five, he's going to gain a lot of points on Travis Quaffle in this race. So it's going to really that rookie back. Well, 64 laps remaining here at Nazareth, Pennsylvania in the Chevy Silverado 200. This week, the motorsports world was saddened by the loss of 62-year-old Fairgrove, Missouri driver Dean Roper. Roper, a three-time USAC champion, apparently suffered a heart attack while competing at the Illinois State Fairgrounds last Sunday. Now, many of us followed Dean's illustrious career over the years, then grew even closer when his son, Tony, a NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series regular, suffered fatal injuries last October at Texas. If there is any consolation to Dean's loss, it is that we all believe that he and son Tony are back together again. As Ted Musgrave makes a pit stop in the Mopar Dodge, and the caution is being waived for the second time today. One truck, the number 19 of Ricky Sanders out of Stockbridge, Georgia, the trucktricks.com Ford has stalled and rolled to a rest down between turns one and two. So here on lap 142, we will have just a second caution flag of the afternoon. A tough, tough uh, deal for Ted Musgrave there. On pit road there, Ricky Sanders came by uh, without the engine running here and stopped on the racetrack. But Ted had already committed to pit road, and the guys went ahead and did their service, and then the caution came out. So it actually cost him a lap, and now he's being shown two laps down. That's a tough decision. You've already made the 35-mile-an-hour eternal run down pit road. He's all the way at the end, so you're within a pit of two of your pits when you think that truck's slowing down. Do you stop, or do you go on around? I think it all depends on where the leader is right there, and, and Greg Biffle may have already got by him to put him two laps down, so then it did, didn't really matter. All right, here is the leader, Greg Biffle coming We can down. make it to the end, right? That is correct. Three, two, three. Biffle asking a question, and the crew chief saying yes, and never mind her. Do, do not pass the pace car. 35 miles an hour. Biffle, Cook, and Spray. Right, Ford, nice Ford, and Chevrolet. Five, Let's go down to Ray. Four, three, well, Jerry, this will be left side tires only for Greg Biffle. He said no adjustments whatsoever. Now, they do need just a little bit of hit of the second can of fuel before he can go. The good news is there's only four trucks that are on pit road this first time by. Amy? Well, the same thing for pole sitter Terry Cook. He's getting left side tires. They will not, I repeat, will not wait on fuel. Whatever fuel they get in during the tire stop is all he's going to take. And a nice stop by Terry Cook. He did beat out the 24 where he did the last. And if you're not familiar with NASCAR Racing's pit procedures, only the lead lap truck, trucks that are on the lead lap, can pit the first time by under a caution flag. Now, next time by, those trucks that are laps down will be able to come down pit road. That will include our points leader, Scott Riggs, who's two laps down in 14th spot. Joe Rutman, two laps down in 12th spot. Musgrave, two laps down in 11th spot. Why are all these guys two laps down? Because Biffle has been just awesome. He sure has. And as Amy mentioned, Terry Cook was able to beat Joe Jack Sprague out of the pits, but Jack took on right side tires, whereas Terry Cook... Greg Biffle and Rick Crawford, the other truck on the lead lap, all took on left side tires. And here come the trucks uh, a lap down or more. Here is uh, Ricky Hendrick headed down toward you, right down left. Well, Jerry, they're going to do left side tires here, and Ricky was complaining about needing more forward bite, but uh, Lance McGrew said no chassis change. So just left side tires and fuel here. We'll also see uh, Billy Bigley coming down the pit road here in a second in the number 75, but left side tires are going on here. Everything seems pretty retuned. They pull out a little bit on the left front fender here. And again, no chassis change for the number 17, Amy. Well, John Wood is stuck in his box, and he almost didn't get in the pit box. The right rear of the truck is indeed out of the pit stall, but that's okay according to NASCAR rules. No for that. He takes them. Oh, now he's locked in, though, by Scott Riggs. Some confusion down here on pit lane. 
wild scramble in the pits there. John Wood trying to get out. He couldn't get out. He backs up, and Gibbs is, Coy Gibbs is leaving, so it's a, they're dodging people and trucks in the pits. Back in a moment. You know, each week in our Craftsman Pit Profile, we showcase some special people who help make this series so successful. This week, we take a look at a valued member of our dedicated Craftsman Truck Series inspection team. Rich Bergdorf has been a NASCAR official for the past three decades, which makes him the perfect person to ask, what does an official do on a regular Craftsman Truck race weekend? First thing in the morning, we go under the hood. I check the carburetor, intake manifold, about everything under the hood. Make sure they're right. Uh, if they got something that doesn't look right, I try to make a suggestion to make it a little safer, a little better for them. Kind of more or less look for something that they might have overlooked or, or did wrong or uh, unapproved. We don't have any illegal stuff. We just have once in a while something that's unapproved. And with all the important duties Rich has in a short two-day weekend, he can always be found working with a smile on his face. It's, it's a great job. The people are, the people are super. The, it, it's outdoors. I love the environment. And uh, it's just to do a lot of travel and away from home a lot. But it's just you, you have to love racing to do it. And NASCAR's been good to me. And there's a look at Rich, one of many uh, dedicated and devoted uh, inspectors in the NASCAR series, both NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, Bush Grand National, and Winston Cup. Now another pit stop, uh, Amy, for the Jack Sprague Net Zero Chevy. That's right, Jerry made an unscheduled stop. They took right side tires when he came down pit lane, but he was complaining of a vibration in the left rear tire. So he came down pit lane, they changed the left rear tire, they are inspecting it. It is not going down. Goodyear official, uh, has Billy Hodges, has said that it just looks as though they did not get the all the lug nuts tight from their first round of stops, or for some reason or another, the, the tire was not on it. Essentially, that gives him a free left rear tire that's brand new. I don't quite understand how he's able to do that. Maybe you guys up there can, can help us sort this out. As they examine the tire, let's examine what happened a moment ago during this caution flag between our points leader and the 50. The two is Riggs, the 50 is John Wood. Wood backing up, and Gibbs' guys are pushing him out. There's contact between Coy Gibbs, Chevy, and Woods Ford. And Riggs is sitting there saying, what's happening, guys? <laughs> 51 laps to go at Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Glad to have you with us. I'm Jerry Punch, along with Phil Parsons, Amy East, and Ray Dunlap. Seven races to go in this season. Six after today. Ford is yet to win, but they are dominating here today with Greg Biffle and the Elden Ford. You and Doc, we saw it, and Amy reported Jack Sprague changed the left rear tire. They don't, it looked like right before we cut away, it looked like they had found a leak because they were pouring water on that tire. It looked like they found a leak because if, if they did not find a leak with that or a damaged wheel, then that would, should be a penalty for Jack Sprague. But undoubtedly, undoubtedly found something. Did they, Amy? They sure did, Phil. Good eye. They did catch it. And the tire was going down, so a safe move by Jack Sprague to come down and get a new left rear tire. Good move, smart move with a two-time series champion and two-time winner here at Nazareth Speedway, Jack Sprague in the Net Zero Chevrolet. Sprague, a three-time winner this year in NASCAR Craftsman Truck Competition. You know, even though he had, the, he had he changed right side tires, as Amy mentioned on his first pit stop, uh, on this previous caution flag, he came in with three left, left rear tires, but that's not necessarily that great a thing because now his tires are out of balance as far as number left. He has not changed left, the left front tire this entire race, so he has 150 laps on his left front tire, and his left rear tire is new, so that's not really a great situation. It's not because you're trying to save money. It's because the rules dictated you're only allowed two tires per caution flag here in NASCAR Craftsman Truck Competition to keep the cost down, and Wayne Alden, everyone wanted to have the series grow by keeping the cost down and getting more and more owners to come on board, and so they made two pit stops, two right side tire changes, and then left the cause of the flag. That's right, and, and the thing is right now, these, these tires build up a lot of air pressure as we go along, so in a few laps, that left rear tire will build up the air pressure to where the other left rear tire was that he took off, and then the tires will be balanced out better, and he'll probably start running a little bit better. Deals being made in the pits, right, Ray? Well, yeah, Jerry, I talked to Greg Biffle.
Biffle before this race happened. I said, what's your goals here? He said, well, it's simple. I'm going to win. And he said, but the one thing is I want to make sure that I treat everybody as fair as I can. And the guys that are in this points race, I'm going to try not to mess with them. So Ricky Hendricks just said, I really, really need a lap back. And their spotter went over and asked uh, Greg Biffle's spotter if he could have a lap back. And Greg Biffle's spotter, who is uh, Rich Rick Reichenbach, said, yeah, if you catch up there, we'll let you have your lap back. So Ricky is paddling as hard as he possibly can to try to get up there to the 99 and get that lap back. Greg said if he can get up to him, I'll give it to him. And yesterday in a press conference, Greg Biffle said, you know what? I'm here to have fun and win one for Ford and for Jack Rush, but I don't want to interfere with the points battle. He said, like, for example, in our Bush series, we get Winston Cup drivers that come in and run a race or two and run over people and, and bump people out of the way and can totally impact the point standings. That's not fair. He said, I don't want to do that here in NASCAR Craftsman Trucks. I come here as a visitor, as a guest. I want to win the race, sure, but I'm not going to run over anybody, so maybe he'll help out to someone, even a, even a competing manufacturer like Ricky Hendrick, to get back on the lead lap. I think he definitely will, as we just saw Jack Sprague move up to the third position by Rick Crawford. When that last caution flag came on, I looked down on the racetrack, and he actually, Greg Bickman hit the brakes, almost stopped to let Scott Riggs get back on the lead lap, or get one of his laps back, because he had just put Scott his third lap down, but he let him get it back. Now Scott's only two laps down. Now, when Biffle said that, when Biffle said that yesterday about how he's going to try to come here and be a nice guy and not run over anybody, one of the veterans sitting beside him said, man, have you tried? <laughs> Let's he, take a look at the points. He whispered that. Yeah, he whispered that. that, was, that by the way, we won't tell you who that was, but his initials are Jack Spray. Okay, here's the points as of now. Rutman would be back atop the standings. Riggs in the second spot, 16 back. Then Spray. Quaffle would still be fourth. He started fourth today, but had to go behind the wall and is now being shown uh, in uh, Travis Quaffle in 25th position, 35 laps back. And, of course, Hendrick would hang on the fifth spot. 130 back, so it gets even tighter. Sure does. Joe Rubin right now is being shown in the ninth position. Scott Riggs is in the 14th position, so that's five positions. That's why Joe Rutman is able, as of right now, to be able to have a point lead over Scott Riggs. There's the Dana Dodge of the driver who could be our points leader after today. We're right along with the man who was the leader coming in. That is Scott Riggs. Back in a moment. of Bristol, Tennessee. A uh, great run last night for the Wood Brothers Ford. Uh, and we, we talked about John Wood, the 19-year-old running well here today. We have his father, Eddie Wood, joining us here in the booth. And Eddie, uh, first, before we talk about your son right here, how about a good run for Elliot Sadler and you guys last night? Yeah, we had a really good run. Um, we got tangled up in a wreck there early and uh, knocked the toe out and did some ball joints. But, uh, you know, Elliot laid with it and, uh, and fortunately, the there was a wreck at Bristol? Yeah, there was a, there was a wreck at Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> we missed all of them. In the room. 16 caution flags for 92 laps. Now, your son, and, and by the way, we pass along our condolences. Your wife, uh, your wife Carol's father passed away this week, and I know that John has had a very difficult week going to the funeral early in the week uh, back in Stewart, Virginia. And, and our condolences to the family back there. Herman Blackard out of Stewart passing away, and, and it's been a tough week for your entire family. Yeah, it's been pretty tough. Um, John came up and did the, uh, the open day and uh, you know, arranged for him to come back for the family night. And, uh, you know, it's pretty tough on everybody. Like, say hello to Angus and, uh, and Carol. And, uh, you know, we'll keep it digging. We heard that Wayne and Kevin and the guys at NASCAR allowed you to check in late be up here because of that, because of that family, uh, the tragedy. And uh, NASCAR certainly has a big heart when it comes to families. That's what this sport's all about. Yeah, NASCAR is family, and, um, you know, we've been racing NASCAR since 1950, and, um, you know, we're a little family, but they're the big family. You know, you guys have uh, been around a long, long time. We talked about uh, all the success you've had over the years in Wood Brothers Racing and all the great people who have, who have won in your cars and, uh, and the Wood Brothers Mercury with your dad, you know, Glenn and your Uncle Leonard and, and all the family that started years ago. But this young man here, uh, coming c cut from the family mold, is a pretty darn good one. He's just 19 years of age. Yeah, he's doing a really good job. They, uh, I think the driving deal skipped uh, Glenn and I. We didn't, we didn't get the right stuff or something, so uh, passed it on to John. And, uh, he's doing a really good job. We're really happy. Fourth at Kansas City this year, seventh at Kentucky, twelfth at Milwaukee, fourteenth at Memphis. Uh, he has run better and better week in and week out. Now the big question is, because everyone knows this young kid can get the job done, Everybody in the garage is asking about it. People have asked me, said, have you heard of John Wood? Is he signed for next year at Roush? What's he going to do? All these guys want him. What is he going to do next year? Have you made a decision yet? We well, haven't really made a decision. I mean, you know, Jack gave, gave John his chance, and, um, you know, I'll be forever indebted for that. So, uh, you know, we're going to take the same Jack and get everything worked out here pretty soon. 
Jack needs to get on the stick because a lot of the owners here with some pretty good trucks that have drivers moving the bush they all have this young man, John Wood, at the top of their list. Uh, and uh, how much does it affect you? I, I sat for many, many years with Ned Jarrett and watched Ned watch his son Dale uh, run in Bush and then in Winston Cup. And, and as a father, it's, it's got to be a totally different experience sitting up here as opposed to just to being a car owner. It's, I can't even put it in words. It, um, you know, I don't get to see him a lot, but uh, when I can, I, you know, I try to always come. But, you know, racing for Jack is Jack's family to me. And uh, that's Wood Brothers, Jack Rouse. That's, that's family. And, uh, you know, we're just tickled to death. And, you know, John's getting to do this. And, uh, you know, we just want to help, you know, make everything work out. Well, Eddie, we wish you the best uh, for the remainder of the year. You and the Wood Brothers team with Elliott Sadler. And uh, thank you for bringing this young man to us and letting us be a part of what has been an exciting year for him and a very exciting future for John Wood. Uh, maybe next year with Roush Racing and the Eldon Ford. And, uh, and again, uh, Max Jones and all the guys have done a wonderful job. And uh, thanks for coming in and visiting for a few minutes. Thank you. Like I said, I would just love to thank those guys for giving John the opportunity because um, I wasn't able to do it. You know, we did it, we did all we could, but uh, you know, they took him to the next level. And I'll, like I said, I'll be forever indebted. Well, Jack Ross has given a lot of people a chance to be able to get to big time racing, and here again, indeed is another example of the young guys who are making a way the name for themselves in the NASCAR Craftsman trucks. News and notes in the world of motorsports and for all the news from the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, log on to rpm.espn.com. The keyword is trucks. That's rpm.espn.com, keyword trucks. Updating your favorite driver, NASCAR Craftsman, NASCAR's Craftsman Truck Series. Six races to go after this week. And looks like Greg Biffle, then again, you never know. It looked like Kyle Busch had a win last week with 12 laps to go, and he ended up stopped in turn four at Chicago Motor Speedway. That's right, but we know Greg Biffle's not going to run out of fuel because he, he pitted on lap 145, so that's only 55 miles to go. So he's not going to run out of fuel. That doesn't mean he's not going to have any problems, but he's not going to run out of fuel. Only had two leaders today, one lead change. That was the guy who was on the pole, Terry Cook, in the uh, Power Stroke Diesel Ford. Cook, uh, his first pole in 1998, his third career pole. He led the first eight laps, and Biffle, who started second, went by him on lap nine and has led ever since. Well, let's go down and talk to Terry Cook's crew chief, Amy. Thanks, Terry. Here with Bob Keselowski and Bob. Will Terry have anything for Biffle at the end of this race? I think he does, Amy. Uh, we need some breaks in traffic. We're getting killed in traffic. Um, a little bit tight. He gets me out of the slow car and lose the air up front end. We, get, we, drop, we lose a half a second. If, if everything's clear, we're a little bit quicker. We got a shot. We noticed there was a little bit of damage on the front end of the truck. Is that hurt his performance at all? It's made it a little tighter. Okay, and like Bob said, when Terry gets a truck up behind him, just as Greg Biffle did when he did pass Terry for the lead early in the race, it makes Terry's truck very unstable. And that's what he's dealing with right now, coming up through lapped traffic. Take a look at the front of Terry Cook's truck. Looks like somebody backed into him, I think. Sure does. I don't know when that happened, what that happened on the racetrack or pit road. Probably on the racetrack on a restart or something like that. But uh, every, you, you count on every little bit, every little angle on those front ends for downforce. And as Bob mentioned, that's making the truck a little bit tighter because you don't have the shape that the Ford designed it to be. I'm sure whenever you knocked the nose off, you always had someone back into you. Absolutely. Have somebody hit the brakes and brake check. Now, I would never <laughs> do that uh, intentionally. Never. Never. Not at all. Terry Cook trying to get his first win since uh, August of 1998. Flemington, raceway 77 races ago. How about a great run for Michael Dawkin in this 81 truck for Rick Ware. Dawkin, who led here five laps last year, now being shown in the 11th position. Great run for Michael. Good to have him back here in the NASCAR Craftsman trucks. Sure has moved way out of the way. But the leader showed, uh, showed Greg Biffle a lot of respect there. Now he's going to just tuck in behind him, see if he can follow him. But uh, again, having a great run in the 11th position. 30-year-old driver out of Clearwater, Florida in the uh, Berghoff beer sponsored Chevrolet. competitor early on when the truck series was first formed and then uh, didn't run a, a whole lot over the last couple years but uh, good to see him back in Rick Ware's truck right here the one. all right laps are winding down moving toward 15 to go we'll come back with the finish of the Chevy Silverado 200 from Nazareth in a moment down here
here at Nazareth, Pennsylvania. I'm Jerry Punch along with Phil Parsons, Amy East, and Ray Dunlap. Glad to have you with us here in this NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series 18th stop of 24 events on the $12 million tour. I saw the two point leaders running together. Joe Rubin was passing Scott Riggs. That was not for position. Joe was in the ninth position, two laps down. Scott is 14th, three laps down. There's Billy Bigley right there behind Joe Rubin. And Billy is in the seventh position, one lap down, having a great run. Billy Bigley's best finish this year, fifth at Kansas City. He had a seventh at Milwaukee. This would equal his second best finish of the year. Wayne and Connie Spears manufacturing Chevrolet. They went back to the in-house engine program for Doug Wolf and Company. So a tip of the hat to Doug Wolf and Company, having Bigley run awfully well here at Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Mark Blessing, the crew chief there for Wayne Spears and Billy Bigley, who ran here in the uh, All-Pro Series. Of course, Billy, the reigning Gatorade All-Pro Series champion from a year ago. Ten laps to go, Doc. Well, meanwhile, it looks like the Blue Oval drought may go away. We told you the Open that Doug Ford had not won since October 28th of 2000 at California Speedway when his teammate Kurt Busch driving the number 99 truck for Jack Rouse Racing won. They have been shut out for the entire 17 events thus far in 2001. But in race number 18 in 2001 at Nazareth, PA, nine laps from now, we'll say Ford may get their first win. We saw the little interval right there. Terry Cook is gaining on Greg Biffle right now. He's inside of three seconds, but uh, Greg knows there's about about 10, less than 10 laps to go, so he, I think Terry may run out of, out of laps. Greg's probably just taking it easy around, not taking any chances, keeping his truck on the bottom of the racetrack, where Terry, I'm sure, is driving his heart out to try to catch Greg Miffle. Miffle is the leader in a Ford. Cook is second in a Ford. Then comes Sprague in the Chevy. A Ford back in fourth spot with Rick Crawford coming off another great run. Rick has the same truck that he had last week in Chicago that raced off his first. He didn't want to bring that truck, but uh, some people got together at the airport and talked him into bringing it. <laughs> Shamed him into bringing it. <laughs> and you know, if Biffle does hold on to win, he will become, uh, I guess, only the second driver to win here. Twice. To, play, to win here twice. In fact, Ron Hornaday won in a Bush, Bush car and also won here in trucks, but he would become the first driver to win here in Bush and truck in the same year. Exactly. And a two-time we'll winner. We'll, we'll get it out. <laughs> and a two-time winner at this racetrack, along with Jack Sprague in the truck series. And he gets a few weeks off in the truck series because they're going to put Kyle Bush back in the truck at Richmond coming up on September 6th. Folks, you don't want to miss that one. Thursday night, September 6th, Richmond International Raceway. Short track, short track action, short tempers. A lot, of, a lot of beating and banging. That's right. Let's check in with Ray. Well, the yellow is coming out right now, Jerry, so uh, we could have an interesting finish here to this race because Coy Gibbs apparently has made contact with the wall, and we normally do not finish under yellow here. Now, there's still six laps to go, so uh, the 29 now has, will close right up on the bumper of Greg Biffle, even though he had a big lead, but with that caution, everything might change. And we are being told no brakes on the 20, the MBNA Chevrolet for Coy Gibbs. That's one of the reasons that he could not get the truck blowed down and bounced off the concrete. So that brings out caution for the third time today. There's the limping MBNA Chevy of Coy Gibbs having that right front damage, dragging some sheet metal and dragging some suspension parts. We're just sitting around here, Doc, uh, talking about how Greg Biffle won this race and how he's going to be the second two-time winner of this of, uh, at this racetrack between Bush and Trucks, and, and all of a sudden, we've got a race in our hands. As Benny would say, what an idiot. <laughs> huh? We can't give this race to anybody here. Until the final thought for the checkered flag waves, and there, there is uh, Bob Keselowski. Man, would he love to see his driver, Terry Cook, who has one NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series win to his name, and Terry's win came on August 8, 1998 at Flemington, 77 races ago will be a single fall restart since we're inside of 10 laps to go. So Terry Cook will line up right on Greg Biffle's bumper. So anything can happen. You can miss a shift. You can get some buildup on your tires and go down the corner and the truck not stick. So uh, this race isn't over. And remember, Amy talked to Bob a little earlier, and Bob said that if we could get through traffic, we might have a shot at Greg Biffle. Now here is Jack Sprague coming on the pit road here uh, for a tire change. Well, he's running third. There's only four trucks in the lead lap. He feels like he has nothing to lose. Amy? 
That's right. He has nothing to lose. And the one thing that he can gain is a fresh left front tire. Remember, that thing has got 100, uh, tire has got 196 laps on it. He said it was completely gone. He was holding on. Glad to see this caution come out. Rick Crawford also going to pit right behind him and take on his right side tire and try to pass that 24 truck here in the remainder lap. Thank you, Amy. Right side tires going on the Milwaukee Electric Tools Ford. So uh, if we get this thing restarted in the lap, so this could be interesting here. Fresh right side tires for Rick Crawford. Single file restart. Folks, don't pull away. This is going to be exciting here in the final two laps. Back to that within a moment. It's lap. Two laps to go. We're coming down for the green flag. It is Biffle, the leader, then Cook in a Ford, then a Chevy for Sprague, then a Ford for Crawford. Green flag, two to go. Remember Sprague and Crawford had pressure tires on these other two guys. Sprague in the 24 has a fresh left front. Crawford has fresh right side. It'll be white flag this time by for Biffle, who has dominated, leading 190 laps. Critical not to overdrive this corner, not to get in this corner too hard. Here comes Cook. One truck, truck and a half behind Biffle. White flag waves from Dion Hensky. Greg Biffle, who has dominated for Jack Roush Racing and Eldon, hoping to put Ford in victory lane. So does Terry Cook, who was the pole center. Half a mile from the center flag at Nazareth, Pennsylvania. There is Biffle, reigning series champion, Cook. Ford truck looks back. Here comes Craig. There's Crawford and Ford. Out of turn four, checkered flag waves. And 31-year-old reigning NASCAR Craftsman truck champion, Greg Biffle, has broken the blue open ground. Nice truck, man. Way to go. That was a great job, you guys. You guys should be proud of him. That's a good work. It's a great truck here. I heard Greg Biffle telling the guys what a great truck he had. <laughs> I saw Rich Reichenbach a moment ago, who was a spotter for Greg Biffle. Max Jones and company. Let's check in down there. There's Rich Rockenbach. Let's check in down there with Lumpy. Back with, 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 with camping in the pits. Yeah, it's over, but hey, race number 18 is a crew team, and you're a winner. Congratulations. Yeah, well, I would have liked 17, but, you know, I'll take this 18. Greg Biffle did a great, great job. This crew deserves it. Roush Racing deserves it. Ford deserves it. I'm glad to get them their first win this year in the trucks. And uh, Alden, I can't say enough about everybody. What's been the difference, though, the last couple of weeks? Um, to be honest with you, I got a great gal that just told me about four races into the season. Uh, and, uh, she sent me down and said, you better get this stuff right because you're, this is, you know, I'm counting on it. So uh, I'd like to thank her, Lynette. I'm sure she's watching. And uh, my kids, my family, they're all behind me. I mean, uh, I, and a great crew behind you and a great driver, too. Go celebrate. Yes, thank you very much, Ray. All right, the winning crew chief, Jeff Campy, with his first victory in race number 18 of his crew chief career. And this guy knows how to do donuts. He is putting on a donut lesson here for all you prospective winners of NASCAR races in the future. That was outstanding donuts by Greg Biffle, his 15th career NASCAR Craftsman truck win. And Ford finally is in victory lane for 2001. Since last October at California, Greg, really overall just a dominating day today. How did you do it? I tell you what, it's just these guys right here. These guys worked really hard, and uh, we didn't have that good a run at Nashville, and uh, they worked really hard to bring me a good truck up here. And, uh, you know, we just, uh, the Alden Ford F-150 is awesome today, and these guys did some great pit stops, and they made my job so easy. Kyle Busch drove it some in uh, test day, got it pretty close. We fine-tuned on it, and I'll tell you, this thing was awesome. And the uh, engines, man, I'll tell you what, this thing's got some yank off the corner. It was just uh, really fun to drive today. Put on a nice donut clinic out there, too. Yeah, it was, uh, I had to do the burnout. I haven't got to do one for a while over in the Bush Series, so uh, I had to do one over here. Just like to thank uh, Max Jones and Jack Roush and everybody that uh, gave me this opportunity, Eldon and uh, Coca-Cola, all of our sponsors. It's just been a great day for us. Talk about the pass for the lead, though. There wasn't a lot of passing out there, but the one you had to make looked like it was kind of difficult. Yeah, it was. You know, uh, Terry Cook, my hat's off to those guys, man. They had a great truck today, and uh, I tell you, the, the, the Fords are running really good right now, especially in these short tracks, and, uh, man, they had a good run, and it was tough. You know, I just got up under him, and 
and uh, maybe got a little air off him. And uh, I was afraid he was going to get up behind me at the end because I was pretty loose. So uh, I used up a lot of tire during that race. They want to keep Kyle's eligibility for Rookie of the Year next year. So you have to run one more race this year. Where is it going to be? I think it's going to be Phoenix, Arizona. We're going to wait and see. But uh, I really enjoy running Phoenix again. Uh, I like that racetrack, so I hope we get to go out there. Okay, Greg Biffle, the victor today here at Nazareth. He gets his 15th win, and guys, remember, he won nine of them back in 1999, but this one may be just as special because it's been a long time since we've seen a Ford here with the checkerboard. Exactly. The win at Ford's front. Three finishers in the top four. How about Biffle to win? Cook in second spot. There's Sprague in the Chevy in third. Crawford back in fourth. So that's four, three Fords in the top five. Hendrick is fifth as only four trucks finish on the lead lap. Good run for John Wood back in sixth position. Back 16 through 30. Great day for Carlos Contreras considering he was injured uh, on, on Saturday here with an incident and his truck hurt his back and the hip and hung on for a 16th place finish. How about... You see uh, Quapple back in 24th position. Travis Quapple, leading rookie of the year contender, finished 35 laps down. How about a guy who's got to be pretty pleased, although a little bit disappointed, maybe, Amy? Yeah, Jerry, you can see a little bit of disappointment on Terry Cook's face. Terry, you've been carrying the torch for Ford all season. I know you really wanted to give them that first win, but what was your track, your truck lacking there at the end of that race? Probably just a little bit of mechanical grip. You know, the Power Stroke Diesel Ford F-150 was awesome all day. Um, didn't, just didn't have anything for Gray. He kind of was sleeping on us there during practice, and uh, it was a lot faster during race trim than we thought he'd be. And, you know, we, we probably were just lacking a little bit up off turn four, which is where he was driving away from us. We were pretty good everywhere else, but it's a shame. You know, we did we did want to be the first Ford to victory lane, but um, we're happy that Ford is in victory lane. Well, you're finishing second again. IRP, you finished second. You're ready to win one of these things, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, we thought it was going to be today. You know, it's um, we're knocking on the door. We're going to get us one quick. You know, we're, we're in the championship hunt, but yet we're wanting to win some races and um, we're focusing more on winning races than we are collecting points and if we win races we'll collect points along the way so look out for us at Richmond. All right Terry I'm real proud of you today. Thank you. <laughs> and a pair of Fords up front they start on the front row and they finish one two. How about a little donut clinic uh, Greg Biffle style the Eldon Ford in victory lane and Ford breaks the drought. Back to Nazareth in just a moment. First from the second, but take a look at the top five, how, how close they are. And back to seventh spot coming into the day, it was 199 point separation. Now it's 161. It is getting tighter toward the top. It sure is, Doc. And 20 points right now between first and third with six races to go is essentially dead even. Folks, when the NASCAR trucks come near you to, to race, you got to come watch. We could have anybody be a champion in that top seven or eight. Let's check in with Ray. Well, we got to find out from Jack Sprague about those tires at the end. I kind of figured with a, a fresh tire on there, you were going to rock it to the front. What was the deal? Well, I think it was. It was coming there, uh, you know, when we got the checkered. It was only two laps. So, you know, my big concern was, you know, don't make mistakes. Don't give Crawford the bottom because, uh, you know, we saw what happened last week when I got beside Crawford and I didn't want him beside me. So, but I tell you, you know, Biffle stomped us. I mean, that was all there was to it. Uh, that guys on that zero show, they did a great job. I was just loose. I think I found out why when we finally did change the left, the left we had a hole in it. So, uh, and it, fortunately, we found it under the yellow, and it, you know, it could have been a lot worse. So, you know, the truck was pretty good at the end, but you know, the 29 and the 99 all ran me all day, and they deserved to finish in front of me. So we'll take third and gain on his points a little bit and go to Richmond. We've got a great points race going, but you did not lead, didn't get any bonus points today. I know that concerns you. Well, I mean, I still gain. You know, we're only 20 out, and all we can, if we can just keep gaining, we'll be fine. Uh, you know, these finishing 23rd, 21st, and breaking and losing 80s and 90s at a time will kill you. So, hey, it was a great day for us. We can't win them all. We know that. But, you know, we had the best Chevrolet, and we we're only truck other than a Ford on the lead lap. That'll tell them something. What about the upcoming races? What's your best opportunities to win with what we've got left in this season? Every week's the way I look at it. We're going to try to win every race we go to. We tried to win this one, and we just came up short. Okay, that's Jack Sprague, who finishes third today. Now let's go to Amy. Thanks, Ray. And Jack Sprague did a great job keeping Rick Crawford behind him there at the end. And Rick, I know you guys had to bully your crew chief, Rockin' Ray Stonkis, into bringing this truck and running it here. Aren't you glad you guys did that? Yeah, Dr. Punch and Phil uh, talked us into it last week at the airport. Uh, uh, we know it's a, it's a good truck. It's a great truck on a flat track. My hat's off to Ray and the Milwaukee Electric Tool Race Team, Lennox, Mobile One, and uh, uh, typical Nazareth today. I mean, we had a great race and a good race truck, but uh, you it had to play the uh, lap trucks according to their plan. and then. Uh, uh, stay on the bottom and a lot of trash build up and also on the, on the upper groove so it, it wasn't really a two-lane racetrack but 
A lot of momentum kept kept here for the Milwaukee Electric Tool Ford, and uh, we're going to Richmond, and we're, we're going to put Ford in victory lane so far. But uh, you know, I just my hats off to Ford and uh, Robert Brooks. Uh, been uh, trying real hard to get Ford a one, two, three finish and uh, even a win. So uh, I'm happy to be part of a top, another top five. Well, ever since Rick Crawford has switched to Ernie Elliott engines, he's not just finishing well, you guys. He's finishing races, and it looks like Ford is back. How about six, third, fifth, and fourth for Crawford, and for the 15th time in his career and the second time this year, Greg Biffle celebrates in victory lane as a winner at Nazareth Speedway. Points leader, and let's talk to the old points leader from last week, Ray. Well, Scott Riggs is down here, Jerry, and we got to find out what went wrong with their day today because it wasn't pretty out there on the racetrack, was it? Oh, not at all. It was a handful all day today. Um, you know, the, the we struggled all weekend here. Uh, all the Dodges struggled, really. Um, I think that, uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't think I know. The, the rule changes the way they are right now. Um, a place like this with the off-camera corners and things like that, the rule changes are going to affect the, uh, hurt the Dodges the most. And, uh, you know, it showed up here today. I mean, anybody who can't see that is just blind. And, um, you know, we, we did some things just to try to, to help ourselves uh, for the race today. We weren't good in practice. Qualified, you know, 10th, but wasn't a very good qualified ever. A bias, but it was the fastest we've been the whole time since we've been here. So um, we did some more things just to try to, to to help it some more, help it turn better, and try to keep that nose on the ground. And uh, you know, it just hurt us. It um, made us way too loose. We were loose getting in the corner and loose all the way off the corner. And you know, after you start with those four fresh tires, um, you know, it, two tires just won't fix it. Any any kind of adjustments we made in the pits um, wouldn't fix it either. So we just uh, had to fight it and struggle all day. On the practice day, Scott, you got out of the truck and Ted got in there, Ted Musgrave, your teammate, to see if it was any better. And he got out and said, there's no way I can drive that thing. So that, that probably helped your mind out a little bit to make you think that you weren't going crazy, right? Well, it tickled me a little bit when Fred, I mean, uh, when Ted got out and he said it scared him because he said he couldn't believe that uh, we hadn't uh, put it in the wall before then. So, um, you know, it's just, like I say, we just, uh, he struggled also, I struggled all day, but, you know, like I said before, I don't mean to harp on it, and I haven't been one to speak up very much this year, but, you know, they need to do something. Uh, I know we've had success with the Dodgers this year, but places like this where it really hurts, uh, it makes it, you know, it makes it a handful for any driver to drive, and no matter, there's no change you can make to fix it, just need a rule change. Well, Scott Riggs with five victories this year, but a tough day today at Nazareth, but one guy had a pretty good run, that's Billy Bigley, and he's with Amy. That's right, Ray, and I enjoy it when we have time to talk to people like Billy Bigley. Isn't it nice to finish a race? Yeah, I mean, the last couple of weeks it's been pretty tough. Um, you know, we've just had a little bit of motor problems, and, you know, Doug and Bill and all the guys, Tim at the shop, they did a really good job. You know, they got us a piece that was consistent, and, and it ran all 200 laps, and we're tickled to death with that, and we made the right calls in the pits, and, um, and I didn't bounce off the wall like a lot of guys did through the dog leg. Well, Billy did a really good job. He brings home a seventh place finish, and it's nice to see no engine troubles for him during this 200 lapper. Indeed, back in house with their engine program. A uh, great run for Billy Bigley, and a, and a tip of the hat to Doug Wolf, uh, in house Spears Manufacturing Engines. Bigley gets his second best finish of the year, equals his second best finish of the year. Let's check in with Amy, who's with our new points leader, Joe Rutman. Well, you won the musical chairs, buddy. You're our points leader now. <laughs> <laughs> we, we firmly got our butt kicked. Uh, uh, you know, hats off to your husband, and uh, the 99 was running real good. And the, um, it's just obvious right now that the, the Fords is uh, way up on us, and I just hope we, <laughs> we, can't, we can't perform in the, you know, mid-pack mid like that. I don't know what we threw everything at it over the weekend. We just never did get going. Uh, Ted, uh, Ted was struggling, and obviously the two was struggling, and so I don't know what we're going to do. We're, we're in a heap of trouble right now. Well, you know, there was some trouble. You guys came down, made that pit stop, and then boom, the caution comes out. So that really puts you guys back, and you have to be proud that you rallied all the way back up to a top 10 finish. Well, yeah, I mean, you got to hand the guys, you know, in the pits, you know, they dug real hard and made good fast pit stops is what, what kept us there. But, you know, it, even if we'd run a flawless race, yeah, seventh or eighth would have been probably the best we could have done. So, uh, you know, based upon what we did early in the year, you know, that's uh, a, a big letdown to us. And uh, to win the championship, we can't run like that and win the championship. So it's just uh, a matter of a race or two, and we we won't be in the we won't be in the chair. You know? Well, I know that the other two point contenders would have been okay with having a ninth place finish for a bad day. But Joe, you got the points lead. You won the musical chairs, buddy. Good job. <laughs> And yes. Rutman is first in points. Ford, that Ford in particular, first in this race today. And coming up next, 
How about the Indy Racing League St. Louis Indy 250 from Gateway International Speedway. Bob Jenkins and company coming up at the top of the hour. Bob Hick action coming up at the top of the hour from St. Louis. Now our news here for the NASCAR Craftsman Trucks. Next stop at Richmond, Bush is back. We're talking about 16-year-old Kyle Bush. Corelli in a Dodge. Rick Corelli won at Richmond a year ago. He's won in a Chevrolet and a Ford, but he's never won in a Dodge. Maybe driving for the Petties. And how about Kevin Harvick going for the hat trick, trying to win in trucks, Bush, and Cup in the same weekend. Let's check in the pits again with Ray. Well, Jerry, we caught up with John Wood, who had another top 10. Sixth place finish today, but this is a pretty wild racetrack. What'd you learn out there today? I learned a whole lot. I learned it. Um, I, I kind of like this place, but then again, I dread coming back. It's a, it's a mess. Um, it's actually really challenging. It's almost like a road course because it's, all three corners are so much different. But we really had a great run and um, to finish sixth and for Biffle to win, that's an outstanding job for the team and um, for the Eldon Office Supplies people and, and Jack Roush Racing. Great day for the Roush Company, including John Wood with a top five or sixth place finish, Jerry. Great run for John Wood. How about naming the only driver to win in the top three NASCAR divisions in the same year? He won in trucks, in Bush, and in Cup. Who's the guy that's done it? We'll tell you in just a moment. Year. How about Texan Terry Labonte, the one at Richmond in the trucks he'd already won in Bush and Cup back in 1995. We'll check in with Amy. Well, our highest finish finishing Dodge is Ted Musgrave. Ted, what are these Dodges lacking here at Nazareth? <laughs> Everybody will scream. Uh, front down force. You know, the, the thing is that Nazareth is off cambered and you got a hill in the back stretch back there and the air just kind of piles up underneath them and gets really, really bad. So uh, best in class is all we can do for today. You know, the Ford's just got, got everybody. The Chevrolets uh, couldn't even hold a candle to them too. So maybe Greg will go back home now. <laughs> well, Ted finishes eighth and the highest finishing, finishing rookie was Ricky Hendrick. How does it feel to be a top rookie here at Nazareth? Pretty good. You know, Team GMAC was up front, uh, Silverado, you know, it wasn't such a good day for Chevrolet, but it was a uh, it was Chevrolet's race, and I hate that a, uh, a Chevrolet couldn't win it. You know, Ford had to pull it off, but it wasn't you know not bad for our first time here. And we'll go home and regroup and head off to Richmond. All right, and Ricky Hendrick now spices back up that Rookie of the Year points battle. Thanks, Amy. And speaking of Richmond, the NASCAR Craftsman Trucks will head to Richmond International Raceway on Thursday night, September 6th. We'll be on ESPN2 that night. Our live flag-to-flag -flag coverage from Richmond International Raceway. It's the Kroger 200, and we told you that Rick Corolla may be in a Dodge by Petty with Mark and Timmy Petty, sons of Maurice involved. Kevin Harvick back in the NASCAR trucks, trying to do what Terry Labonte is the only other driver to do, and that's win in all three divisions in the same year. And, of course, uh, Kyle Busch coming back for the Eldon Ford for his third start, an impressive 16-year-old. What a year and what anticipation for Richmond in a week and a half. I think it'll be great. Obviously, Ford's back on the map now, and the, and the Dodgers will be on a banked racetrack, so they won't have the flat track problems they talked about here. So it should be a terrific race, some great side-by-side -side racing in Richmond. And a dominating day here at Nazareth, Pennsylvania for Greg Biffle, who led 192 of 200 laps. The reigning NASCAR Craftsman Truck Champion breaks the Ford drought and puts the Eldon Ford for Jack Rouse Racing in victory lane. For Ray Dunlap, Amy Easton, Phil Parsons, I'm Jerry Punch. Once again, congratulating Greg Biffle on his win in today's at today at Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Remember, September 6th, we're under the lights at Richmond International Raceway. Coming up next, Indy Racing League action from St. Louis, Missouri. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. <laughs>